So, um, what's that called? I'm thinking about this, you know, you're saying that your family was immigrants, they came from Oklahoma, and, yeah. you know, and then all of a sudden, it's like you were discovered, right? Like, how do you go from, you know, everyday normal life, like us, you know, and then all of a sudden you're discovered, and then is, is it like a roller coaster ride? Like, how do you transition from just being. It was you know, awkward. Slightly awkward. It's very awkward. Because okay. when I got founded, it was 2009. Oh. Am I in trouble? What did happen? Okay. <laughs> he's like, oh. And then he just like, he's like, no. Okay, uh, but um, when I got dis discovered, uh, cosplay was still like, you know, um, getting more popular online. And it was actually very new because um, like Jessica Negri used to consult with me, you know, like, um, like Yaya and all those other girls. Um, it was still a small community. We were still like, let's just make costumes. Let's just have fun. And now it's like this become this whole big, uh, you know, like crazy like job thing, which is like it's still very weird for me. Um, but how I actually transitioned was really hard because um, I had a regular job. I went to school for business, and I was also a stylist. So I did a lot of work. I've always been working since I was 15. I worked all the time. And I had to tell my family, which they were not very happy about it. They're like, what do you do? And I'm like, well, I make costumes and I model. And they're like, no, you're not doing that. That's so bad. Like, what are you doing? Like, they were thinking, they're not very open-minded Vietnamese people. They're just like, you should be a doctor and not, and find a husband right away, you know, and have children. So I was like, no. Nah. I kind of want to be a nerd forever kind of thing. <laughs> so um, it took them five years to kind of get used to it. And now my mom finally writes on my Facebook wall and says, good job. And I'm like, cool, man. Thank you. So was it a hard transi transition? Very much so. Um, it tore, kind of tore my family apart, uh, especially me. I didn't live at home. And um, my dad got cancer, and I came back home to live with my dad. And then I started explaining to them what I wanted to do in my life. Um, I don't need a lot of money. For me, I, that's not my aim. Um, I need enough to eat. I'm very simple. Like, I just need enough to eat, and I need a space where I can be creative. And as long as I have those two things, I'm happy anywhere. So my parents wanted something else for me. but. You know, your parents want a lot of things for you, but as a creative, you don't need that much, you know, just to make you happy, as long as you have an outlet to uh, express yourself, so, yeah. So it definitely was hard, but you can do anything. I don't want to be those cheese balls, that you can do anything and be like that inspirational cat thing, <laughs> you know, but you can't, really. It just takes a lot of time and effort. And meeting the right people. Um, don't think that you can do anything alone. Um, I definitely think that in the beginning, um, I thought I could do everything by myself, and it just started getting too terribly hard on me. So I think that if you meet one or two friends that believe in the same vision as you, build on that vision together. Um, because it's really, really hard to do it by yourself. Um, and no one can do everything by themselves, right? I mean, you can build something by yourself, like, I'm really proud of this armor I did by myself, but there's other people along the way that helped you get there. So always remember that too. Yeah. How much time do we have? I don't care how, I mean, you guys, do you guys care? It doesn't really matter. Okay, cool, awesome. I'll just stay here then. <laughs> Typical Deadpool. <laughs> always doing, always rolling around. Okay. Um, like this. Okay, this is my question. Oh yes. Um, are you seeing anything from newer video games and things like that that uh, kind of inspire you with costumes, or is it kind of like the Twilight thing? What do you mean? Just like I know you're really retro. But are you seeing uh, kind of newer things that are still? Inspired? Oh yeah, of course. I mean, I'm looking up the Fallout uh, armor, and I, I'm too small. I'm tiny. So I'm like, I can't make that. Um, but then there's always games that I play that inspire me. 
so the new stuff, like, um, I'm really interested in um, making a, I don't know, I really want to make something from Fallout. Um, or uh, was it like uh, the new game Overwatch? I, I'm excited about that. A lot of my friends already cosplayed Overwatch. Um, they actually work there at Blizz, but um, I really like D.Va so far because she's she has Mecha on her leg, and I'm like, that's so typical of something I would want to do. Um, she's a Korean character uh, based on a Starcraft player, right? So I uh, definitely want to play that because it's a shooter. So I love shooting games a lot. Yes. Um, I might I might sound a little weird on this. So, um, or it might be a little bit off to off topic okay. of what you do. So, um, have you done any like League of Legends cosplay? No, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> what do you guys think about League of Legends? Do you guys play it a lot? Yeah. No, no. There's half and half. Okay. Um, I haven't done any League League costumes, but I think I've been making one in February if I have time. What channel? I can't say. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a group. But um, do I play? Yeah. Oh. Okay. The microphone's trying to kick me out, but um, yeah, not not yet. Yeah. I'm more of a Dota person, so I like Dota. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not against any games though. It's not like any hate. I'm not throwing shade on anything. So. Yeah, I like Dota. A lot. So. Oh yes. So, uh, what is one costume that you really admire but have yet to do? Oh, of course, uh, Bubblegum like... Crisis. <laughs> yes. I yeah. want to do Chris the hard suit with the motorcycle and everything. Um, that was that's my dream. She's the coolest lesbian ever. <laughs> and she's like, you know, like she's badass, but she's like so chill, you know. And I'm like, man. I want to be like that. I was gonna ask what saber you would do, but you already answered that. <laughs> yeah, I love I love Pris. She's amazing. She's strong and beautiful, and she has that weird retro hair. But poof, it's, it's, it's awesome. I love cheesy hair. No, 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 it's not cheesy. It's not cheesy. It's, it's cool, right? Okay, fine, good. Thanks. Oh, uh, another another question. It's yes. a Ruby question. Uh, have you seen Volume Three yet? No, I haven't seen Volume Three yet. No. I, I won't spoil it for you, but be ready for the first episode. Oh yeah? Okay, I'm excited. Uh, when making a new cosplay, how much time do you spend in the pre-build phase? Like, oh, planning, uh, planning? Planning takes the most time. I think for anyone who makes costumes, you're always looking at reference pictures. I literally have, if you look through my cell phone, it's all reference pictures. Like literally my whole phone is uh, pictures of the side, uh, toy version, uh, anime, animation version, like everything is in my phone. So when I wake up, I can look at it and be like, okay, this is what I'm doing today. Um, I literally take at least two weeks preparation, um, material wise, and what fabrics I'm going to use and things like that. So two weeks. And then the actual build depends on the project. So for a, for a Gundam, it will probably take like two months. Um, that's non-stop and then like uh, for a fabric build like or like a bodysuit I usually take a day or two I'm pretty fast at sewing so yeah it depends yeah it depends but I, I think the most time is two weeks for research yeah so uh, what's the most weirdest slash craziest thing a fan has ever done to you since like you've been going to like these you know comic cons uh, and, every know. con they got some crazy person <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah every con so like what I still think it's weird when guys tell me to beat them up because I'm like oh, yeah I think it's a little bit weird they're like do you like it do you do you, yes are you into dogs do you like when people step on you because that's best stuff on guys so anyway, um, no, uh, I just, I find that weird, but then, I had, when I was wearing Morgan, some guy asked me to poke his eye, like what? literally poke his eye. I was like, what? With my wings. Um, Cause on my head it was made out of balsa wood, so it was really hard. And the guy was like, can you poke my eyes with those wings? I'm like, what <laughs> is wrong with you? So I, of course, 
course I started laughing, because I laugh at everything, and I was like, uh, no. And yeah, that was weird. And then some guy wanted to like buy my shoes after the show, and I was like, to sniff them? This is weird. Yeah, I get this weird. Was that from this Comic Con? No. Not this one. No, it's usually San Diego Comic Con, you get the crazies. Okay. Yeah, those they save up their money just to go you know, say whatever they want. So, uh, so then, like, it's really weird. So then, like, I guess seeing somebody has asked you, uh, can you bite me or something like that? Oh, that's normal. I, 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 you know, yeah. You know, have you bit me kind of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, already, I kind of already know what they want in a picture. So anything aggressive or whatever. Um, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, anyone else? Oh. Off topic, like, since it's like your first time on Guam, and I'm like, it's, it's an island climate. Yes. Like, what climate do you actually prefer? You know? Okay. Like, like, so, since it's my first time in Guam, and for, for every country I like to visit, I want to be like the locals. And a lot of the locals tell me they're inside. And they're like, you walk, Linda? And I'm like, yeah, I walk. And they're like, no, why are you walking? And I'm like, well, I, I want to discover more of Guam without you guys have to, having to chaperone me. Okay, I really don't want to always ask people to do things for me, so I'm like, oh, I'll go walk outside and, you know, hang out. So I went to the malls and then, um, you know, but then I thought the locals would be more like, you know, I'm just walking around. They're not walking around. You guys are walking around, right? No? No, not really? Yes. Not really? Okay. You walk so to your car and then, okay. Cause I, I walked a lot actually from my hotel to like uh, the shopping center, the fancy area. I don't really care for that area, but you know, it's a fancy area. I walked over there and it was fine. What, what do I prefer? I like cold weather. I like to be freezing kind of because of this face stuff. I wear the makeup, so it, you know. You know, you understand because you have some paint on your face. So uh, I like cold weather, but I don't like hot weather either. So but I'm partial to cold weather. But I love Guam. I mean, literally, I don't get attached to places, but I'm really like getting attached because I've been here for three days, and now I'm like, oh, I'm glad I'm staying till Tuesday, which I'm staying till Tuesday, so I can see the south part of Guam. Yeah, I really want to see the coconut crab. <laughs> National Geographic and I've always thought, ooh, that coconut crab looks awesome. So I kind of want to see that live, like, up close. I heard they're huge. Yeah. 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 Uh-huh. Yes. Um, so you're a fan of comics, right? Yes. Uh, what's your favorite Marvel character and what's your favorite DC character? Uh, well, DC? Uh, well, I, I love Nightwing. That's kind of obvious. And then, um, who else? Who do I? I love Jessica Jones. I, I love her, um, and then I also, well, Psylocke, to me, it's so simple, because, like, I grew up.